Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Rainbow Cupcakes. I'm just coming on a minute or so early because I know some of you have had trouble finding me. So hopefully you've got a notification now that we're live. Um, so come and say hello, give me a wave, give me a thumbs up, let me know who I'm cooking with this morning. And I'm gonna take a bit of time just so we make sure we've got all of our ingredients here. So do not worry, um, that should be fine. Perfect, hello, hello. I can see lots of you joining me, that's great. So everybody's found us, terrific. Terrific. So we're going to have lots of fun this morning. Hi, Millie. Hi, Imogen. Fantastic. You're all ready to bake. You did so well the last with all of the rest of our things. If you haven't made the cheese straws, go and do those. They were amazing. Hi, Emily. Hi, Eliza. Fantastic. And Jaden. Amazing. Ayla and Cohn. Fantastic. And Lisette. Lovely. Hi, Belle. We've got all of you, all of my old friends. How nice is that? Hi, Freya. Hi, Lizzie and Sophie. I know we're all super keen to bake. So you're going to have a good time this morning. Hi, Annabelle and Sophie and Alex. And I know some of you have struggled with the rainbow laces, so don't panic, okay? I'm going to give you some options. Hi, Pauline and Crystal and Flavia. Oh, look at all of you. All of those lovely thumbs up and hearts. I love it. Hi, Francesca. She's helping today. Fantastic, Lisette. That's good. Um, I'm going to go through in a minute what you need. Don't worry, I'm just saying hello. Hi, Peter and Ruby and Eliza. You're ready. Fantastic. You are so excited for the rainbow cake. Okay. Hi, Kim or Maeve. Sorry. And I've got Chloe and Amy and Jessica and Persephone and Olivia. Fantastic. Rashika and Jay. And I can see baking day is obviously most popular. And I don't know what it's like where you are. It's a little bit cloudy in and out, isn't it? So we're going to bring some sunshine with our rainbow bakes. Definitely. You're eating your breakfast, but you're doing it with me. That's okay. Those of you that haven't had breakfast like me, you can have a cake for breakfast shortly. So hi, Nancy and Oscar. Amazing. Right. So I'm going to go through... A little bit. Hi, Addison. I say hi right back to you. And I'm just going to check that a couple of you, I'm looking for some names. Hi, Lily, of a couple of you that couldn't find us going on live. So hopefully. Hi, Ben and Sophie. What is a rainbow lace? So a rainbow lace is, well, I call it laces, but it depends on the supermarket you buy it from. Hi, Beatrice and Esther. It's these things. Hi, Alexandra. Um, these are called, what are they called? Fizzy belts. These were from Aldi. Hi, Theo. And they're basically just, if I open one up, they're sweeties that are a bit like the strawberry shoelaces or the co um, cola laces, but they're rainbow colored. And you can pretty much buy them from every supermarket. We had a really good thread going, the grown ups of where you can buy all of these. Can you see, they're like this and they are delicious. Hi James and Thomas. So kids that are cooking with me, make sure that you don't open your packet, keep them out of the way of mum and dad. Mum and dad are very keen on eating these. Hi Safia and whoever got there, mummy, and so you're excited to join me today. And Maggie and Melanie, fantastic, and Penny. Lovely, multicolored long ribbon sweets. Yes, exactly. Hi Estelle. Estella, sorry, I got that wrong. So these are only for decorating, so don't worry. I'm gonna go through all the ingredients. I'm gonna go on one of my trays this morning. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker so that my cakes are in the oven and they cool down so I can show you how to decorate. So don't worry, we've got lots of time to do it this morning. Hi Iman and Raffaella, that is fantastic, good. So let me tell you what we're gonna need for the cakes so you can get that stuff ready. Um, I know a lot of you have already got it out, so that's good. So you're going to need some self-raising flour. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Jasmine and Adele. So some self-raising flour. And if you've only got plain, don't worry, that will do too. You're going to need oh, some caster sugar. Lucky me, I got a big bag because I know this is hard to get hold of. Hi, Faye. You got them. Jasmine's here. Fantastic. And you're going to need some butter. Now, if you've got butter out like I have, I left this out overnight. You can see it's quite squishy. Soft is going to make it easier, but whatever you've got, okay? Hi, Kirsty. Um, and then you're going to need a couple of eggs. So I've got my eggs in there. Um, hi, Imogen. Um, and I've got a little bit of baking powder and then some vanilla extract. Now, this isn't normally the one I use because they might be a bit short. The one I really like is the Nelson Massey, the little black bottle. So you might have that. Hi, Evie and Ava. Um, so that, that's what we need. OK. Um, and a little bit of milk. I'm going to go through the quantities when we weigh them out. Just want to make sure that you've got your bags out, okay? So don't panic. So you need a bit of milk, and I'm going to get mine out from the fridge in a second. You've got strawberry laces. That's okay. The decorating we're going to do afterwards and mini cupcake cases, I'm going to show you the tins. So hang on one second. So that's just the ingredients for the cake. For the icing, um, well, you're just going to need some butter, some icing sugar, okay? Some of the vanilla that you had before. Um, and then for decorating, hi. Who have I got there? Hi, Bilal. Um, you're going to use some laces if you've got them, 
and we're going to dye up um, the cakes and the other stuff. So if you need, if you've got, what I really need is these. So I've got them in six colours: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Okay. Um, if you don't have this, do not worry. You can make plain cakes, and then you can still ice the top. Doesn't matter if you don't have vanilla. No, we're fairly flexible. Hi, Ria, Mummy, you've almost forgot. That's okay. Um, so vanilla is really nice for flavouring. If you don't have, don't worry. If you can't colour them, don't worry. It's still an amazing cupcake um, recipe. You're going to do it later, Alison. That is perfect. Uh, hi, Kiefer and Casey Lee. Lovely to see you again. Um, so do not worry about all of the different bits. So I'm going to show you what you do because I know some of you have tried to order the um, food dyes and they've not all come in in time, okay? So I'm going to show you why these work and how you can use them, but do not worry. Vanilla bean paste is absolutely fine. Just use a little end of the tablespoon, a teaspoon or something like that. It's perfect, okay? Now, in terms of cases, so let me show you sizes first of all. So all cupcake cases, like most recipes like this, will make 12. And they make 12 this size. So you've probably got a sheet like this that's got six on them. So it would make two sheets. Doesn't matter if these are my silicon ones that I love and I'm going to show you why. But if you've got other ones that you've got um, metal ones with um, liners, that's also fine. Hi, Esther and Elijah, they are going to be yummy. Now, some of you might have these. These are smaller ones. So these are 12 holes. So they're half the size. They're baby muffins. And they're lovely. So if you've only got these, it's going to be a little bit fiddlier to get all the colours in, but it doesn't matter, okay? So basically, you're going to make two trays. So you can make one small and one big or whatever you want. It really doesn't matter, okay? Um, so I'm sure you've got some trays. Hi, Gracie and Ari. Um, so whatever you've got. I'm going to make them in these because this is regular fairy cake size, and that's usually probably what most of you have got. Can you use blueberries instead of rainbow laces? Yeah, the, the top is only for decorating. It's not really, we don't need blueberries. I'm just going to wait and watch what I'm going to do. And if you have got the stuff, great. And if you haven't, um, they're still going to be delicious. Okay, it really doesn't matter. How much butter? You're going to need 125 grams of butter for the cakes. And you're going to need another 80 grams for the icing on top, okay? Um, if you don't have the icing on top, again, you can leave them plain. So I'm doing the full Monty today, okay? So you can see, because they are so pretty. If you don't have all the ingredients with you at the moment, do not panic, okay? And then the other things you're going to need to do it, you're going to need a nice mixing bowl. I've got a glass one so you can see what's going on. You're going to need some little bowls, and I'm guessing most of you have got these kind of Ikea bowls. Um, I'm just going to spread out my cake mix so that we can dye all the different colours in a separate bowl. So that would be good. Hi, Hayden. Um, and then I'm going to do mine with a hand mixer. So something like that, okay? And obviously you're going to need your mixing spoon. You've got some liquid and some gel colours. Yeah, so you can use the liquid colours in the cake mix and you can use them a bit for the um, buttercream. You can never use them for fondant, okay? So that's why I prefer these because they you don't need as much. They last forever um, and they don't leave any taste at all, okay? Um, oh, who have I got here? I've got Ginny Bell and Amidala. Perfect. So, um... That's what we need. And then I've got a food processor that I'm going to show you. I'm going to do my frosting in, okay? Because that's the easiest and less messy way. Um, now, when you come to the frosting, do not worry because we're going to go through this all again. I have got a piping bag. Let me show you this. Um, I know a lot of you will not have, so that's fine. So what you can do is you can get a little food bag, a little plastic bag, and we can just shove it down in the corner there, tie it up, and then cut a little hole and you can do some piping. So I'm going to show you everything. Do not worry. Hi, Hayden. Perfect. So I think we are all good. So we're going to start with the cakes and most importantly, get your ovens on. So you want to put your oven at 200 or fan 180 because we're going to get them into the oven quick so they can hopefully cool down and decorate. Now yours might still be in the oven um, when I'm decorating. Do not worry because you're going to watch what I'm going to do and then you can do it afterwards, okay? Because I don't want you guys hanging around too much. What brand are the food colours? From Honey, almost 11. So they're Sugar Flare and I've put a little list on, on my Amazon list so you can see what they are. Now bear in mind with a lot of these things... No factories are open. They're not making any of this stuff at the moment. So if it says it's out of stock, just let me know and I'll find you some new ones because there are some colours that are much better than others to use. And honestly, they last for ages and you can use them for anything. You can use them for all kinds of experiments, edible eating experiments and paint them. They're just really like poster paints, okay? Um, and you can use them like regular paints because you can just mix the colours together. So you don't need like every colour under the sun. What was in the little container? Was it um, this one, baking powder? Possibly baking powder or vanilla? Uh, if it was these little containers, these are just my food dyes, okay? So don't worry about that. We're going to start with the cake mix. So we're going to make a plain cake mix, and then I'm going to show you, those of you that got food dyes, how we're going to dye them to make our rainbow cakes, okay? I haven't got one that I prepared earlier to show you this morning, so that's why I'm going to work quick so I can show you. Lovely. We're up to 100. Fantastic. So first things first, 
All aprons on, hair tied up, wash our hands if you haven't already. And then we're gonna start with our cake. Okay, good. So what I need you to do, will the video be on YouTube? Yes, all the replays are shared onto YouTube and shared also back up here um, on the Facebook page too. So I'm just gonna get some milk out as well because I need that for my cakes. So what I haven't said is those of you that are doing dairy free, obviously just use Oatly in place of milk and just use Pure or something in place of the butter. Um, those of you that are doing gluten free, then obviously just sub in your gluten free flour and a bit more. Um, hi Liana, a bit more baking powder, okay? So if you've got any questions as we go, oh it's Lily, hi Lily. If you've got any questions as we go, just shout them out. So what I want you to do is put your bowl first of all on your scales. Remember, we're going to turn our scales on. And those of you that asked about scales, these ones I can't find for you at the moment, but I put the next best thing on that list as well so you can see. So make sure it's on zero, make sure it's on G for grams. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put our bowl down. And this is a one bowl cake recipe, which means we're going to chuck it all in together and cook it all together, okay? Hi, Bradley and Aviana, you're excited to do it live. Good, 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 good. I'm excited too. So I'm gonna start with my butter. Now, when you get a packet of butter, if it's helpful, like this one, all packets of butter are 250 grams, and you'll see they've got these little 50 gram lines, so it gives you an idea roughly how much you need to cut off. Now, those of you that thought you were coming to a cooking class, it's actually a maths class this morning. So half of 250 is 125, which is what we need. So putting it down on the table, so I'm not gonna do it in my hand, but I want you to be able to see it is I'm going to cut half my butter, which should be 125, so I'm just going to literally cut in half. You can see how soft my butter is. Whack it in there and check that it's the right... Oh, it's so warm in my kitchen. A little bit more. So you want to weigh out 125 grams of butter, okay, into your bowl. If your butter's super soft like mine, do not worry about chunking it up. If your butter has just come straight out of the fridge, then what I suggest you do is just take your knife like this in your bowl and just cut it up so it's a little bit smaller and it will be easier to mix around, okay? So just do that with your butter. Sorry about my scraping noise. So 125 grams of butter just goes in your mixing bowl. Perfect. Good. You're gonna love these, they're my favorite cakes. And then when you're done with that, you wanna set that little button to zero again, because we're now gonna add in our sugar and our flour. So this is a really good recipe because you'll notice that we always use the same quantity of flour, butter, and sugar and usually about the same quantity of eggs, not that you'd weigh an egg. So an egg is usually about 50 or 60 grams, so it's about the same. So if we've all got our butter in there, what I want you to do now is press that onto zero, like I said, we're gonna get our flour, and we're gonna shake in really gently 125 as well, okay? So I'm putting in 125. And a little tip for you, there we go, is always put your flour to one side. So if you did too much, I could take my spoon back and just take a bit out. But that way I'm making sure I'm only taking out the flour and not taking out any of the butter, okay? So I've got 125 of butter and 125 of flour in there too, my self-raising flour. I've got self-raising flour, but if you've got plain flour, then just use plain flour and we'll add a bit more baking powder in a minute. It'll be fine, okay? I like to add a little bit of um, baking powder to mine just to get a really nice rise on my cupcake. Good. So if you're good with that, give me a thumbs up so I know. So I don't want to go too fast today. And then if you're good, have I added the sugar? No, I'm, you're one step ahead of me. So Charlotte is right. So now I'm going to add in 125 of the sugar. So basically 125 of sugar, 125 of flour, and 125 of butter. So let's do all of that. Those are all our dry ingredients first, aren't they? So it's a really, really easy recipe, this one. But it looks super impressive. You'll be so impressed when this is done. I know some of you are dropping it around to neighbours and they are going to love this. This is perfect. Well, it's perfect any time, but perfect lockdown cupcakes because of the rainbows, which is why, obviously, I chose to do them. And because this week is Mental Health Awareness Week and it's nice to go and cheer somebody up. You're going to make them later. That's okay. You can still watch Amy if you want to. So I've got my butter, my sugar, and my flour in there. 125 of each, okay? Yes, caster sugar if you've got is ideal. If you have granulated sugar or something else, that'd be okay too. Okay? So I'm going to hold on. That's all right. I'm just waiting, Sarah. That's okay. So when you've got all of your flour, sugar, and your butter in... Give me a thumbs up and then we'll wait until everybody is good. Do not worry, we're not going to go ahead of anybody today. This is all good math practice, isn't it? All that weighing. 
And that's why I like these electric scales. So every time that you add something, you can just press that little button that says tear, which just means you set it to zero and then you can start again. Hi, Lily. Oh, lots of thumbs up. So we all got our bits in there. Good. So actually, I don't really need my scales now. So I'll put them to one side. Hi, Susie. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our little teaspoon now. So I'm not using a measuring spoon. You can if you want, but teaspoons, just the ones that we use to make cups of tea like that. And what I need you to do is take that out a little teaspoon of baking powder. Now, when I say a teaspoon, I don't mean a mega one like that. You can wipe it up the side of the bowl or just a flat. I just shake it out a bit. Just a flat teaspoon like that. OK, so if you're using plain flour, a bit more in there. Marshall says, hi, you accidentally put the icing sugar in the flour. Don't worry. Icing sugar is just really found, finely ground caster sugar. So if you've got enough icing sugar, leave it in there. That's fine. Hi, Daisy. You came when you were little. I remember, Stefan. And you live up the road to me, too. So I've just put a little teaspoon, okay, of baking powder and then a little half a teaspoon of vanilla. So a little tip for you. Oh is always pour what you're pouring over your bowl. So go slow. So maybe if you get mummy or daddy to hold the spoon if you need it, and you can do a bit of pouring. So just half a teaspoon like that. If you put a bit too much, and you can see that there, I don't want to tip it there. So I'm just going to put that. Mm, smells amazing. I love vanilla extract. Really, really yummy. And if you don't have vanilla extract, don't add it in. Don't worry. It's not, it's not a problem. Do you need to do the baking powder if you've got self-raising? I do, Pavan, because it just gives a little bit more height in the, in the cake. But it's up to you. If you don't want to or you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Um, so it just gets them nice and peaky, which helps when I do the, the rainbows. Okay. Hi, Esme. Lovely to see you. So in here, I've got, just going to go over it again, 125 of butter, 125 of flour, 125 of sugar. And then just a little half a teaspoon of vanilla and a little teaspoon of baking powder as well. Okay, good. Now, while we're on the pouring, we'll do this. So you're going to use your milk or your oatly, whatever you're using. And again, like the vanilla, hold your spoon over the middle of the bowl and we're going to do three spoons. So we're going to pour slowly. How much baking powder if you're using plain flour? I just do a heap teaspoon. It'll be fine. You don't want too much because it can taste a bit. So there's one. So I'm just making it nice and flat, tipping it in. And I'm going to do two, like that. And then I'm going to do three, like that. So there's my three spoons, okay? So I'm just going to wait for everybody to do the same. Perfect. And honestly, when you get, when you know this recipe, you're going to make it again and again and again and again. How much vanilla paste? I would just do a tiny little end of a teaspoon. Vanilla paste is normally a bit more concentrated, but it normally tells you a little bit on the side what you can use. Hi, Phoebe. We got lots of you baking this morning. I'm so excited to see your pictures afterwards. They're going to be absolutely amazing. Perfect. Okay. The vanilla really is just for flavour. It's the same with the buttercream. So if you don't have it, it really doesn't matter. But I would always say, try, and this, this one I don't normally buy because this was what they sent me, but um, the, the Nelson Massey, the black one, or the vanilla paste that some of you have asked about is the best one. And when you smell it, it's got an amazing, amazing smell and it just adds to that flavour. What does the milk do in the cake? It's a good question, Felicity. It just makes the cake mix just sort of droppy and I'll show you the consistency we want afterwards. How much milk, Gemma? Three tablespoons. If you spilt a bit too much, do not panic. No, it's absolutely fine. Who is my PA <laughs> that's replying? That's my husband, Ben. So you can all say hello. So he's answering, hopefully. So if you get, a, if you get a, an answer that doesn't sound like Nicole, then that because it's Ben. So hi, Neve. How much milk? Three tablespoons, Ben. Okay. And I'll show you why. Now, those of you that give me thumbs up that look like you're ready to go, we've got our two eggs. Now, I'm going to show you, we always practice with eggs because I think eggs are really good to practice separating. So first things first is we always give it a tap, tap, tap on the side of the bowl so you can watch me. So you can hear it and you've got a nice big crack. And then we hold it in the middle of the bowl. I don't want to crack it here because it's going to end up all over my feet. Hi, Christy. Hi, Maya. I'm going to put my thumbs in and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to let that egg into drop into the bowl. So I've got two halves, okay? Now, those of you that are being very fancy pants and want to practice separating... Oh, we've got some friends here. That's so nice. We've got lots of people saying hello to each other. So let me show you. Same as before. We do tap, tap, tap. Then I hold the egg up with my pointy bit. I'm going to lift the top off like that, like a hat. And can you see all of that white just drops into the bowl? And then I can pour from one to the other like that. And then my yolk 
just stays in there. Now you don't need to do this, so don't worry. It's just a bit of fun to practice egg separating. So if it, if it cracks and we make a mess, it doesn't matter today because we need the whole egg in there anyway. Oh, we got lots of friends saying hello. Oh, oh we got lots of hellos to Ben, I think. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, well, he's very happy. He's smiling here with his cup of tea. Thank you. He's, he's only helping me this morning because he's going to get a cake for breakfast. He thinks he's going to get a cake for breakfast. Is that right? Maybe you're going to get a cake for breakfast. So if you've got a helper at home, they're only allowed cake if they help you wash up. You know the rules. So, and make sure, like I said before, if those of you that have been lucky to find these laces or belts or whatever you call them, keep them away from your grown-ups because we had lots of chats about how yummy they were. Otherwise, there won't be any left. Hi, Elsie and Megan and Hayden. We're saying hello to each other. You use the dessert spoon. That's perfect. I, I, it's exactly what I use. So this is like my tablespoon, which I always say is the one I use at my table. And this is my teaspoon, which is the one I use for a cup of tea. So three of these. You can use measuring spoons if you want, but I find sometimes people get really hung up about it and you don't need extra kit. Honestly, this is fine. It really is, okay? Um, perfect. Now, if you put your baking powder in, I want you to have a look because it's quite fun. You can see it's kind of all fizzed up. I don't want to pour it right on top of you. But if you've noticed the fizz, that's because the baking powder is starting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two eggs. Two eggs, Santa. Oh, thanks, Amanda. So that's all you need. So I'm just going to double check you've got everything in there. You've got your flour your sugar and your butter and all three of those were 125 grams you had a little teaspoon of your baking powder you had a little half a teaspoon of your vanilla you had three tablespoons of your milk and you had two eggs perfect good you're all paying attention this morning i love it so now i'm going to make some noise and don't worry if you want to um catch up so i'm going to take my mixer now if you've got the same sort of thing so some of you might be feeling very strong on doing it by hand today, and that's good if you've got soft butter. But I want to show you a couple of rules with a mixer. So first of all, all mixers will have, mine goes left to right instead of front to back, but yours might be different. But they've all got numbers, and we always start on the lowest number because I don't want to get a face full of all the flour. Um, how to use egg replacer, the measurements. It should be on the back of the packet, and I think from memory it's something like a teaspoon to two tablespoons of water and you mix it up first and add it in but just check if that's the um all grand that's the one i normally use and it will tell you so don't quote me on that because i haven't used it in a bit but it's on the side of the packet it will say if you're using one egg it's this many teaspoons or tablespoons to this much of water and it makes paste and then tip it straight in no one is helping you oh that's okay you're giving it to your sister all right so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on the lowest one and we always make sure that these beaters are going to be right down at the bottom of our bowl so i'll show you so that's why i've got a glass bowl can you see i've got it right down to the bottom i'm going to turn it on to number one slow because i want to mix if i tip it up there i want to make sure that all of my butter and all that liquid is mixed in before i go faster and you can see i've got a bit of butter at the side so i'm going to need to scrape that in too so can you see it's starting to get a nice paste? Let me show you this, turn this off. So once it comes together a bit like this, then we can go faster, still pressing to the bottom. There we go, that makes it better. You're gonna whiz it up until you get a really nice soft paste. Perfect. So it's super quick, it should only really be like that. Should you add the milk? Yes, definitely add the milk in there. And so those of you that ask me what's the milk for, I'll show you. The milk is so you've got a really nice droppy consistency. So I'm going to give it, when you've done this, do what I do. You want to take your beaters out, give them a whack, and then chef's perks as you get to lick those if you want to. Ben, would you like to lick the beaters? No? Okay, I'm going to put mine in the sink then. Right. So what you want, if you've got, so those of you that think you put in a bit too much milk, it doesn't matter. Let me borrow the milk back, please. So you want a kind of consistency that's, this is what we call dropping, that sort of slowly drops off the spoon, that's not a liquid. But if yours is very thick, so particularly if you've used an, oops, sorry, an egg replacer, or you've got gluten-free flour, you might need a bit more liquid. In which case, what you do, you've got some new chicks. How nice. Are they giving your eggs? How lovely. So you'd put in a bit more milk and you just mix it in until you get a nice kind of droppy consistency. So you might want to add a bit more milk, depending on what you did, but that sort of consistency, can you see it's slowly dropping like that, okay? You've already liked them, oh, hi Neve. So that's what you want, and you want to scrape all the side of the bowl. I always say check your bottoms, and I'm not being rude. What I mean is right there on the bottom, I want to check that you've turned it over and that all of your flour and your sugar and everything else is all mixed in, okay? So I'm going to wait a minute until you guys are all good. So when you've got your nice, lovely cake mix, give me a thumbs up, and then I know that we're good. So that's basically what it looks like, okay? You can see there. 
And if you were super strong this morning and you had soft butter, you can do it by hand like that too, or in a big mixer, however you want to do it, doesn't matter. Good. Lovely. You've got five chickens. Oh, I love this. Anybody that lives near me, I'll have some fresh eggs. We've got lots of foxes near us. That wouldn't be so good. So now what you're going to want to do, those of you that have got food dyes, whether you've got the ones like me or whether you've got the liquid ones, if you're going to dye your cake mix, I'm going to dye mine six colors. So if you have six colors, you want six little bowls. If you only got like three or four colors, then just three or four little bowls. If you don't have any food color, just leave it as it is and just watch us. Your butter was a bit hard and it's a bit lumpy. Yeah, it does. So keep going, Gemma, just with the hand mix, just turn it up. It will just take a bit longer, but it'll be fine. Yours is lumpy. Same for you, Nicola. So that's normally why whenever you bake, little tip for next time is take, if I show you this, this one I took out the fridge like this morning. You can see my finger squishing it. It's not really giving. This is for the buttercream. This one I left out last night was the one I used. Can you see? I can squish it there. So soft butter makes it much, much easier. Your batter's lumpy too. So what normally just cut the butter in, if it's hard, into small pieces and then just go a bit more with the mixer. Just go for a couple of mi minutes on, on the highest speed and it will, it will um, you know, dissolve it effectively. It'd be fine. Yours seems really thick. So if yours is a bit thick, Amanda, do what I did. Just add in a bit more um, milk just until you get a nice consistency like that that's why I want to show you so you're all going to know what it looks like and also today it's a little bit better if it's a bit runnier it will be a bit better because we're going to share it out you put two eggs and you forgot that you were doing half the ingredients oh bunny okay so you're going to need to add in the rest of the stuff if you've got enough flour and the other stuff add that back in because otherwise your egg, your cake mix isn't going to be so good if the mix is a bit loose do not worry today it's going to be absolutely fine Lisa not a problem at all better to be loose than it is to be a bit thicker you only have two different colors, that's fine. So if you're gonna do pink, what I would tell you what I would do, Sarah, is split it into three. So you've got one plain, so it'd be like this, like a white one, and then one pink and one green. So you'll have three colors. So it's a really good point. So anybody else that's only got a couple of colors, leave one plain, so you've got a little bit more, because the white will show up really nicely against your other colors, okay? So I've got six. I wish I had all bowls the same color. So I'm gonna be going for red, yellow, green, blue, Oh, orange, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I've got six, okay? So what you're going to do is roughly, you're going to put, and it, don't worry about weighing it out, I'm going to try and just do it by eye and put a bit of my mixture in each bowl. So if you're doing three colours and one plain, just share it out roughly evenly, okay? It really doesn't matter if it's not exact. I can see mine isn't. So you can just borrow a bit from the other bowls and just and make sure you scrape out all of your cake mix don't want to leave anything because you definitely want as much of the mix and as much color as you can so i'm just sharing mine out sort of evenly if i show you what i've got and then i'm going to scrape all of that bowl out make sure i've left nothing there okay hi nita i'm going to put this to one side because i might come back to that in a second so all i've done is i've just shared out you can see all of my bits here and like i said i've got six bowls if you don't have six colors don't worry so if you've got um like one of you said if you've got pink and green then just divide it into three so add an extra bowl for one the plain color i'm going to dye all of these so i've got every color of the rainbow so you can see but i know not all of you have all the cake dyes now so it's fine so you can make what you can do today see mine i know you're going to love it and then you'll order those in and try them again okay it looks um, it looks fine. Is that okay if it looks fine? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you put two, well, you could, oh, I see, with the extra eggs. Um, it'd probably be, you could give it a go. We'll see. I'd probably put in a little bit more flour and sugar just to thicken it up. Um, but if you're a bit loose on ingredients, then try it. It's baking is all an experiment, so we'll see. Um, it might just be a bit denser when it bakes. I don't know. We'll see. And it also depends, Bunny, on how big the eggs are. So, you know, usually there's a bit of flexibility as well. You'll be all right. Right, so I'm just going to wash my finger. Okay. So has everybody divided out their bowls? And then I'm going to show you what to do, because I know some of us have got more colour, so it doesn't matter. So if you've got the liquid ones, you're just going to pour a bit in there. And the important thing to note, I'm just going to put all of my teaspoons in. So a teaspoon, different teaspoon for each bowl would be helpful. Where's my other ones? Now, if you've got, um, so like I said, if you've got pouring colours, then just pour some in and you'll start to mix. If you've got the ones like this, then they do have a tendency to stain. So careful you don't get any on your hands. And the best thing that I find is I use toothpicks. So I take a toothpick and I pop it in like that. I get a nice bit of colour. You don't need a huge amount. So let me show you. Some colours you need a bit more than others. So you can see it's not a massive amount. 
and I'm going to wipe it on the side of my spoon like that, take all that colour off, and don't leave these on your table, I always put them down on the side in case I need them again. And then basically what you do, it's like a poster paint, can you see as I'm starting to swirl, you can see that swirly pattern, and you're just going to mix it in really, really, really well, like before when I said check your bottoms so that all of it is mixed at the bottom. Now, if you end up with something like this, can you see that little line and stripe? That's the paint that I've not mixed in. So you keep swirling until there's no dark bits and until there's no white bits. So you wanna keep turning like that, turning over and over. So there's my red, can you see? So that's my red and I think that's good. So then I can throw away that little bit and I'm just gonna come back. This is the fun bit, it absolutely is the fun bit. You're ready with some liquid food gel. You can use the liquid food gel. For this kind of quantity, you're okay, but sometimes liquid food gels, you need a lot, um, and you'll end up, you can end up finding you use several just for a cake. So these are much more cost-effective. They last forever. So here's my orange. So you can see some have different textures. Yeah, the, the colors will get slightly paler when they bake in the oven. So that's why I want you to make them as bright as possible. Um, so let me pop that one down. So let's try. So it's some, some of them are a bit more gel-like. You can see that orange one. So we'll mix it in. This is really good fun. And you can do this, you'll see, we'll, see, we'll do this for the buttercream. So you can see here, I know that that red, that's why I choose it, is a really bright color. So the orange is not quite as bright. Let me show you that. So like if I wanted to, oh there, I can, I can see now why it's not as bright because I've got a stripe. So you keep mixing it because if you've got a stripe, that's just paint that you've not mixed in. It is just like painting normally. So there's my orange, so I think that's pretty good. And you just put them all together like I'm doing and then you can see if you need to come back and do a bit more. So if that was too pale, I just use my stick that I've kept there clean, pop it back in, okay? So toothpicks are quite good, save you a bit of washing up. Now yellow, usually you need a bit more. So this yellow one you can see, is much more gel-like it normally is right so take another bit wipe it on the side of the spoon and the reason I'm wiping it on the spoon on a clean bit is obviously I don't want any of the cake mix to go back in this pot okay because otherwise it'll go a bit icky won't it so mix 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 oh look I've got the yellow one in the yellow bowl that was good wasn't it so every time scrape around the sides and the bottoms you can get the grown-ups to give you a hand if you need to and just check that all of the color is in and you so you haven't got any darker bits and you haven't got any white bits where you've not mixed in so that's my three now you can see that your hands start to get a bit funny it does wash off do not panic okay but don't wipe it on your what food dye I'm using the sugar flare ones but there's particular um, colors that are really good so you'll see them there on my Amazon list that I put up there for you and you don't need off as much as I've got I mean I've got loads more than this but for example red you can use just use a bit less to make pink um, yellow and um, blue you can use to make green etc etc it's Wilton you can use Wilton too I, I personally prefer these um, and these are from I think from the UK from the other stuff Wilton you can find can be a bit difficult particularly now spectral yeah I can't remember yeah these are they're from Essex right not that it really matters right so I'm going to do my blue now like this but yeah, I mean, Wilton or these ones are much better than the stuff you buy in the supermarket and you have much more choice and you can buy them. You don't need to, you can buy them online and they'll last for ages and you'll see we use them. Those of you that are doing um, the half term classes with me next week, we'll use them for fondant work. So these are really good. It's what cake decorators use basically. Oh, so you can see it's quite hard for a bit until my blue gets going. So I'm gonna be excited to see what colors you've got. So later you're going to have to have a bite of like half the cake and then show me what it looks like inside. So you can see now why putting it in a little bowl with a little teaspoon really helps. I've got a little stripe there, so there's my blue. And some will come out brighter than others. I'm just going to do it kind of quick today so you can see. What did I miss that? Red, orange, yellow. Oh, green. I did, didn't do green in order, did I? Okay, let's do green, which is not normally the yummiest of colours. How much food colouring? It's, it's just, if you're using these ones, like the gel paste, I just use, if I show you, like a little kind of dollop on the end of, of that. And then 
wipe it on here but I choose particular colors because I've learned from experience that these are the darkest ones so you just do it by eye you don't need to use a lot that's why they're really they last for ages so just use a bit like this you can see just mix it in if you think it needs more just add a bit more so put your stick to one side so that you can add it back in and it's clean oh, what was that ah that's a different one that's holly green normally I have Christmas green I think So that green one, I actually think could do with being a bit brighter. And I put my stick away, let's use this one. So you can always add more. It's just like using regular poster paint. So always start less and you can add more, okay? And that's why you don't actually need that many colors because a tiny bit of each one will give you a pastel version of the same color, okay? But in the oven, everything will dull down and the color on the top will go a little bit browner because obviously cakes in the oven go brown, don't they? So, right, so that's my green. My hands are looking very colorful. I'm gonna go and wash them in a minute. And then the last one is my purple. So again, if I show you, I just kind of do a little wadge, whatever comes out, that's like an end of a stick. Okay, perfect. So it's all gone quiet, so I know you're all doing your colors. Now, if you don't have as many colors as I have, as I said, remember, leave one little bit white because the white will show up really well too, okay? So the idea is we just got a really pretty pattern inside the cakes. I know it's a bit of a faff, but it really, really is worth it. Oh, here we go. So if you think it's not not dark enough, just really keep turning it because you can see you've always got little stripy bits and it's just that that paint is not properly mixed in. So you don't need to waste any more paste by adding more, just keep stirring it, okay? So there's my purple. So I have got six lovely bits. My hands are a bit icky, so I'm gonna go and wash my hands and come back and watch you. When are we making cake? We are making cake. This is the cake mix. This is the cake mix. So it basically it's gonna go into the tin in one second, okay? So I'm just gonna wait for you all to dye you however many different colors that you've got, okay? Now your hands will get cleaner later, do not panic, okay? It does come off. What are we making, Tina? We're making um, rainbow cakes today. So we've just made our cake mix, we've just been dyeing it, so I've got my six rainbow colours. We're going to shove them in the tins, put them in the oven, um, and then I'm going to show you how to make some buttercream and decorate them. So we've got a nice long, long session this morning. Okay. So guys, when you're done, give me a thumbs up. I don't want to go too fast, but I want to get one tray in the oven so you can see what they look like when they come out, okay? So if you're still a little bit behind, do not worry, because I'm going to do two trays with you, but I just, like I said, I want to get something in there. Um, so give me a thumbs up if you're nearly ready to go and then I will show you what we're going to do. Perfect, good. So do not panic if you're not quite there yet. Let me just show you. So remember, I'm using silicon. Oh, you're welcome, Tina. That's okay and you can do later. So the reason I like these, you'll, sh you'll see, is I don't need to mix anything. I don't need to grease the tins. I don't need to line them. And I'm going to do what I call the bang bang trick, which is where we hold it tight, like pull it almost left to right and I bang it on the table so that the colors are going to set down here let me show you what I mean so I'm going to start let me start with my purple because that's what I've got in front so what I'm going to do is a tiny bit in each so I'm literally going to use half a teaspoon and I'm just putting a dollop in each it's not scientific and it might be that my next tray has more purple it really doesn't matter okay so I'm just doing this so let me show you so you can see I've got a small bit, okay? Now I'm gonna bang it like that. So that's my purple. Then I'm gonna do the same with my green. I'm gonna keep this dirty finger, do not worry too much. And don't worry if you're not as quick as me, I'm just gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna do the next one slowly just so I can get this in the oven and you can see what they look like, okay? So if you've got really dirty fingers, it's quite good to have a little bit of kitchen roll here that you can do. So again, I've got a little bit of green on top of my purple. Bang, there we go. This is why I love these tins. If you've got metal, don't bang them, but just leave the dollops, it's fine. You don't need to mix them in because if you keep mixing colors, it's like paint. 
and we'll only end up with brown, won't we, which is not so good. Right, if you are using the metal tins, yes, absolutely. If you're using metal tins, grease them. I would normally line them, actually. I think most of you probably put cupcake cases in, so I would probably do that. Okay, so there's my blue. Because you can see what that does is it spreads it all out, but it doesn't mush the colours to get a brown colour. So because I'm going yellow now, I'm just going to wipe my finger. So you do whatever you normally do with your tins. I don't want to encourage you to buy stuff if you don't need it, but I know a lot of you have said, oh, I really like these, what will I do? Or I need more cases. So if you're buying new, then buy the silicon because it goes in the dishwasher and in the freezer and it, they're brilliant. They really are so much easier. So kids, have you got a birthday coming up? That's a good one to ask for. So there's my yellow. So you can see they all look different. They all look really pretty. And then here's my orange. I've just got a bit more colour to go. And like I said, it really doesn't matter. You could change it up. I'm doing, so you could do like, you know, three different colours in one. There's my orange. Yeah. If you're only doing two or three colours, then obviously you need to, to add a bit more. It's because I've got so many bowls. So I'm going to show you when it's done. You, you'll see how high the cake tins are. But you could do it my way. So you could do a little teaspoon of each colour and then do another bit on top really doesn't matter and I'll show you something you can do with swirling it if you want to so it's my red ones bang bang perfect so sorry about all that noise so this is what my tins look like okay so they look really pretty now what you can do if you want to I'm going to put these in the oven I'm going to do the other ones with you so you can see I'm just getting a skewer is if you want, with a skewer or a toothpick, the colours are amazing, aren't they? You can just gently put it in and just gently give it like one swirl round, like that. Can you see what I've done? So that you get a little bit of a rainbow swirl. Not too much, because if you do too much swirling, it's all going to end up purple. You don't need to do that, so you can see what they look like now, okay? So these, this is my first tray. I haven't done the second one. I'm going to put these in the oven because I want these to get going so that I can show you when they've come out, okay? So they're going to go in the oven for about, um, what did I say, about 15 minutes, I think. 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big they are. And if you're using the smaller um, cupcake holes, then a bit less time. So I'm going to do the second one with you. So do not worry, we're not going too fast. So basically what you want to do is you want to share out all of your cake colours, whatever, however many you've got, into your holes. And you should make about 12 big ones or 24 small ones so either way you should make about two trays you might end up with a bit less if you end up with like 10 cakes instead of 12 that's fine so you just keep sharing out and this is how I do it so just the same one teaspoon in each and then if you run out of a bit or you've got a bit more in one you just share it out between all the holes okay so when you get to the end of your bowl like this is my red I'm doing it back to front color this time you put purple in, but it turned grey, you turned it to yellow. Okay, so purple is one of those colours, Bunny. Have you got the, um, the, the same paste I have that can come out looking really grey the first time? You need to add more. It's just one of those colours that can look a bit insipid at first. If it's a bit of a gross colour, don't worry, it will still come out brown in the oven. It really doesn't matter. Now, I might make 11. So what I want to do, what I always do is I make sure that I scrape off all my colours but I keep this here because in the end, I'm then going to take my spatula and scrape out all of my bowls so in case I'm a bit short, okay? So it doesn't matter whatever way you want to do it. There's my red, I'm giving it a bang. Just gonna, you can add in whatever color, any order, it really doesn't matter, just until you use them all up. And it's a really good one because you'll be able to check that you've got all of your colors. It's a good way of practicing, you know what the rainbow is. How we got here, do you need cupcake cases? Yes. Cupcake cases or grease them, however, whatever you normally do with your tins. I think cases would probably be easier, actually. Um, but that's why, that's why it's not so easy to bang it with a cupcake case. So if you've got cupcake cases, just leave them in little dollops like this. Don't bang them, and you'll just fill them up, and it will still be fine, okay? The, the cake mix will dissolve, the butter dissolves in the oven, and it'll be perfect, all right? But I know a lot of you think, like, I'm a bit obsessed with silicon, but now hopefully you'll understand why. So I'm scraping all my green in. Give it a bang again. I'm just going to take whatever colour you want. And you can do this for anything. This is why I like these colours. You can use them for cheesecakes. You can use them for cake mix like we did today. You can use them for what else have we done for dyeing drinks. Or you can dye vegetables. Or you can dye anything you like. Buttercream, fondant. And it doesn't taste. They're all vegetarian. 
Um, they're really good and they last for a long time. So how many degrees for the oven? So it's 200 or 180 fan for about 15 minutes. So I know you guys are a bit behind me, so don't worry. Do both your trays and then put them in together. I just wanted to get mine in so you could see what it looked like, okay? So you can see I've got a bit more orange at the moment, which is fine. So I'm just going to share it out between the trays. Remember, we didn't divide it all equally, so not everything will be exactly the same. So there's my orange. And either way, it still looks really colourful, and that's really the only thing that we're worried about. Want it to be a rainbow when you bite into it. It's going to be lovely. So those of you that have had rainbow cakes or you've seen rainbow cakes before, you can do this exactly the same when you make a big cake. So you make one layer of cake, each colour, and then you stack it up. And that looks really good too. What colour goes in first go really doesn't matter, whatever you want. Um, the colour on the top will go a bit brown. So sometimes you, you don't see it, like if it's purple or red, because normally I do it either red to purple or purple to red, but I'm just doing whatever bowl I have in front of me. Um, and if you're sharing it and you're doing it together, then that's a good way because you can have a little production line going, can't you? That one of you can do all the yellows and one of you can do another colour. But it really doesn't matter. And if you swirl it, it really won't make a difference anyway. So there's my yellow. You can see I haven't done it in a particular order. You have large cases and small cases. I would do the large ones because they're a bit easier. You can see when you're starting doing six colours in a small hole, it's a little bit fiddlier. But it doesn't matter. Either is fine. Or you could do like the small ones and you could do mix and match. So maybe you'll put two or three colours in here and a different two or three in another one. Just as long as you finish them up. There's no, there's no right way of doing it. It really doesn't matter. You are the chef, so you get to choose. You don't have to do it my way. You can do it your way. So I'm just going to scrape all of these out. So I reckon I'm making 11. So those of you that said you had a drippy mixture or put a bit too much milk in, you'll find it's probably easier to share it out now. Right, could you use the same batter to cook the cake instead of the cupcake? Yeah, you can. Um, you'd need quite a lot more. I would, you could otherwise use just a Victoria sponge recipe or something like that. I mean, these don't taste, as I said. They, they add no flavour at all. They just add colour. So you can do whatever cake mix you normally did and dye it. Obviously a white cake mix, so you wouldn't dye a... Like the lemon cake we made, you could dye. You wouldn't dye a chocolate cake because you won't see it. So a bit like that. You put a lot of purple in, now it looks like a mess. Oh, don't worry, it's fine. It will still look cool when it bakes, trust me. And they'll taste delicious. So I've got my last colour here, so that's my blue... I'm just sharing all of these out so it looks like I've got a bit more blue than the other colour. It really doesn't matter. Here we go. Right, your cakes are out of the oven. My goodness, Helen, because you didn't have any food colouring. They smell delicious. Good. Oh, Neve. Perfect, that's fine. So Neve, if you've got the icing and you've got, have you got any food colours at all? Because I'm going to show you, you can still decorate it and make a rainbow topping. So I normally make those cakes plain and they are delicious. But now you know, now you can get some cake colours in and you can do them next time. So that's my last one. I'm going to get a bang. Perfect. Now because I don't want to waste anything, what I'm going to do, remember I said I had a lot of these bowls. You can see I've got all my spoons there. i pop those out of the way. And then I'm going to take my spatula that I had from before and I'm just going to scrape all of the bowls. At this point I don't mind if they get a bit mushed up together. So you'll see how much with a spoon spatula you can scrape out. So this was a good lesson too. We never want to waste anything. I, always, I don't like the washing up so that way I don't have very much washing up. So I'm going to scrape it all out and you'll see I've got, look, I've got a lovely rainbow on my spoon. Isn't that cool? Like that. And my last one. There's my last one, okay? And then I can just add a bit to each tin. Don't want to waste anything. I've got lovely little mini rainbows on the top. But you can see, if I show you here, so these are my colours, and if I mix it just with my finger, can you see now I just get a horrible brown colour? So that's why you don't want to mix it. You just want to try and keep the colours separate if you can. Okay? So there we go, a bit more. Bang, bang, bang. So that's what it looks like. So I've made 11. I haven't got a full, a full thing here. Your sister told you to put blue in. It's blue. Okay, fine. Darker colours are better, but purple is one of those colours that you do, tends to go grey at first. The same with blue if you use a particular pastel blue. So I use a different one. Um, and some colours require more of them. So like to get a really bright red, this is the red I really recommend. You need quite a lot. And the same for yellow. It just depends on, on the colours, all right? So these I'm going to put in the oven. I'm just going to wash my hands. 
Now do not worry, we're not in a huge, I'm just gonna tidy up and get all of my stuff out so I can show you what we're gonna do for our cake decorator. Now they should smell amazing. So I know some of you have already got them out. So they smell fantastic. I'm gonna get a bit of space here so you can see the cakes. You have lost the kids licking bowl, that's all right. As long as you scrape it out, Maggie, because kids, you are not allowed to lick the bowl if you haven't got enough cake mix in your cake tins. Okay, 15 to 20 minutes, yeah, exactly. So when you um, test cakes, so normally if you've done it plain, it's gonna be easier to see because you want them to be nice and golden. So first of all, they'll rise, they'll be a bit peaky and it'll be very hot. So I don't really want you to put your fingers on them, but if you did, you'd feel it was spongy. It's not like a raw cake mix that you saw was stuck to my fingers. And then you're gonna put a skewer in or a little toothpick right to the bottom and pull it out, right in the middle in the highest point. And if it comes out clean, then you know your cakes are done. Where do the laces come in? The laces we're gonna do now with the icing, that's the decorating. So that's why I wanted to get the cakes in and get mine in quicker so you'll see what they look like. You may need to give yours like another 10 or 15 minutes to cool down because especially it's a hot day today, we're gonna to make a buttercream icing, which is basically butter. Hi, Charla. Um, and you don't want to have the butter like dripping off your cake because the cake's boiling hot because it's come out of the oven, all right? So I'm just gonna wait until you guys are done and your cakes are in the oven and then I'm gonna show you. Do you have to swirl the colors? No, you saw I didn't swirl the colors on the second time. How many minutes to put in the oven? About 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size of the, they're in the oven, Farrah, excellent. 15 to 20 minutes, Edward. So usually I do about some about 17 in my oven. It depends how hot your oven is and like I said, how big the cakes are. If you're doing the baby ones, the small ones, then probably nearer 15 will be more than enough for them, okay? So like I said, just until they look a bit brown until you put the skewer in and they come out. Now don't panic if you've dyed them and they come out and you think, God, they don't look very bright. Remember what I said, the top of a cake always goes brown, so the top will be darkest. I'm gonna show you what happens when you cut into them. You get that really bright pop of color, okay? And we're gonna make it, oh, I'm loving all the hearts. They are amazing. And that's part of why I'm gonna do the icing. So it'll be a real surprise. So when you cover it with icing, no one will know how amazingly colorful the insides are, okay? So I'm just gonna give my little table a clean here. Because I'm a bit mucky. So always, always, when you finish with your food coloring, I'm gonna use a little bit more in a minute, but make sure you've cleaned your table. They don't stain, they will come off, but it's not a good idea to leave them on too long. And the same, when you wash your hands, you can see I've got a bit of yellow and a bit of green there, they will come off properly, okay? The smell is lovely. They are amazing, amazing cakes. So I do these all the time. You do not need to do rainbow colorings on them. Fantastic, guys, I'm loving this. We're all working as a team today. Cool, cool. So. Set the timer on your oven, because we don't want to forget those, but I've still got mine in. Oh, and I can see mine, they look amazing. They should be, if, you're, if you can see in your oven, they should already be really peaky and really colorful, and that's what I want, okay? So we're gonna make the icing. So for those of you that already did plain cakes, you are one step ahead. Um, so what you're gonna need now is a food processor. You're gonna need some butter, icing sugar, and your vanilla essence, um, extract even. Um, and then a little bit of blue color if you've got. If you don't, do not worry, we're just gonna leave it white and we'll still do the rainbow laces if you've got those, okay? So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we'll all get our stuff together and then I'll show So you're just gonna have a bowl on your scales again. And then I'm gonna bring my processor so you can see it. Oh, it smells good. It's not, not a good smell at breakfast time, is it? It makes us hungry. So here's my food processor. Now, the reason I do it in a food processor is icing sugar makes a terrible mess everywhere. So much easier to do it in the food processor. And icing sugar is one of the few things that I, we haven't got a food processor. Okay, so have you got either a little, um, like a, you know, coffee grinder or a spice grinder or a Nutribullet or a soup maker, anything that's got a little blade in, even if you've got um, a zhuzhi blender would probably work. If you don't, you can do it by hand, but it will make a bit more mess. You could probably do it with the beaters as well, actually, but that would go everywhere. So, oh, I'm loving the rainbows. Um, so if, if you're doing it um, by hand, Amanda, you'll probably want a bit of softer butter, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you why it's easier to do in here with a blade, but if you don't have, it really doesn't matter. Um, I just learned to do it in here because when I did it here and I mixed the icing sugar, I got a whole cloud. It's a bit like fairy dust, really, but it was a bit of a mess. So you're gonna turn your scales on. We're gonna start with our butter again, and we're gonna need 80 grams. So remember, we used, if you, if you took out a fresh packet of butter like I did, do you remember? It was 250 grams, so we used 125, so I've got 125 left there, so I'm not going to need all of my butter because I only need 80. So I'm going to cut it small, I'm going to cut it down onto the table, so I'm just cutting, you can see, like a big chunk like that, and then I'm going to cut it in smaller pieces like that. I'm just going to pop this in here until I get to my 80, okay? 
So again, just chunk it up because it's just easier in the processor. But if you, like I said, if you've got a Nutribullet or one of those little Breville smoothie makers or something like that, anything that's got a small blade, you'll be fine. Um, but I know it's impossible because some of you asked about the food processor that you can't hardly buy anything like that now. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Right. Okay. We're 80. Okay. So when you've got your 80, I'm going to take that and I'm just literally going to chuck it into my processor, okay? All of that. Oh, okay, I'm going to slow down. That's fine. We've got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Good. I know. It's, some of us are not doing any colours, so we're super ahead of the game, and some of us are doing six, and it takes a bit longer. But it's good fun, isn't it? And those of you that can, have got them in the oven, smells amazing. Yeah, the mine have gone really, really peaky today because I put in that extra baking powder, so I really like it. I think they look yummy. And they, sometimes they do, they drop a bit when they come out of the oven anyway. So, mine are nearly done. A couple of minutes and then you're going to see what they look like and see how colourful they are. Okay. So, so just weigh your butter in if you're ready with me. We'll wait a minute until everybody's with us and you can get your bits ready. You can give a bit of a wipe down. If you've got loads of time, you could do the washing up. Perfect. Looks like most of you are good. Okay. And then, so if you've got your butter in there, and don't worry, Lizette, we're going to come back, okay? So I'm just going to do this to keep up with the, this lot. We've got plenty of time. We are going to put in 200. You're going to watch now and decorate later. That's perfect. And then you know what to do. So you're going to pop in 250 grams of icing sugar. Now, icing sugar is just really finely sieved caster sugar, um, but it's often quite lumpy. So you'll see I get a whole nice little cloud as well when I... Can you see that steam coming up? Yeah, you can there. Whoa, look at that. So that's why I don't, try not to do it by hand. So I need 250. This is going to make more than enough for what we need today. Whoopsie. Perfect. Okay. So if I was using this, you get a bit of a cloud. Whoa, look at that. So that's going to go straight in there. Okay. Whoa, can you see all of that? So if you've got a white table like me, you won't see it. If you've got a black worktop, you'll see it. Yours aren't even in the oven. That's okay, don't worry. We're not in a, how much butter? 80 grams of butter. 80. 80, 80. And um, 250 of icing sugar. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time. So your cakes are going to cool. So I'm just going to show you what you can do. And then you can come back to it later. It really isn't a problem, okay? And you can always pause it and come back and watch later. Perfect. So I'm just going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla. And again, if you don't have vanilla, do not worry. It's just for flavouring. It will still taste delicious. Oh, that's the beeper. You'll get the butter and then do the icing. Perfect. Okay. So when your cakes come out, we just want to put, was it 250 grams? Yes, it was, Stacey. So 250 grams of icing sugar and 80 grams of butter, all right? And then a little teaspoon of vanilla I've put in there at the moment. Oh, looking nice. Mine are very peaky today, actually. Put the coffee oven the oven was hot. Yeah. I got my, my helpers put them in the very top bit of the oven, and I would have put them slightly lower, but it doesn't matter. They still look fine. How much vanilla? Just a teaspoon. Just a teaspoon. Now, how much for the icing of the things? Do you mean how much icing sugar or do you mean how much icing for the cakes? This is going to make more than enough. So normally this would make enough to pipe swirls on your cupcakes. And when I'm not going to pipe swirls today, I'm actually going to use less icing. But you'll be able to use it for any other cakes. It keeps in the fridge for ages. You can dye it again if you want to. You can have it spread on biscuits. My kids like to spread it on like a rich tea biscuit and have it like that. And you can play around with piping the icing. So it's lots of fun. Um, so don't worry about it. If you want to do half, you can do half as well if you haven't got enough icing sugar. Okay. So you can leave them in for a second. They're coming out. Okay. So mine are coming out so I can show you. What do you need for the icing? So it's 80 grams of butter, 250 grams of icing sugar, and then I've put in a little um, teaspoon of vanilla. How do you make the icing? We're going to do it. So basically it all goes in the processor and we're going to whiz it together. Now if your butter's really hard and it was a cold day, I would put in hot water. But I'm actually, it's quite a warm day today, so I'm actually just going to put in some regular water. So I'm just going to fill this up from my tap just with warm, not boiling water. Okay. 
And then on my scales, because we're going to measure liquid, we measure liquid in millilitres, don't we? I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to change on the unit button until we get to ml for millilitres. I don't know if you can see that there. And then I'm going to pop 25 millilitres of water in here. And then that's going to go in there too. Okay. Yours are falling and then, why are they failing? They're not failing. Is it just the colour bunny? Don't worry, they will not be. I promise, I promise, I promise. They will all be fine. I'm going to go and show you mine. Don't worry, because can't, you can't fail anything in the kitchen because you're just learning to do next time. You've got, um, Flavia, you've got all the recipes. You've got all the recipes. It's all on there. So I'm just going to pop my lid on and I'm just going to show you how easy it is for those of you that are ready to do the icing and then don't worry for the rest of you, we're going to come back. So literally, I'm just going to turn it on. Whiz it up. You can hear it. Until I get, yeah, I'm gonna, so we've got some water in there as well, let me show you. There. So until it comes together in a paste. So I'm going to take this out so you can see. So just to recap, it was 250 grams of icing sugar, 80 grams of butter, 25 millilitres of water. Um, you can put milk in, but I put water in mine because then it lasts for longer. And a little teaspoon of vanilla, okay? And that's all you need. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to take some out. I'm going to put my blade away. So you want this kind of texture. So that's my buttercream, okay? So it looks a bit like cake mix, but it's thicker, all right? Because we want to be able to pipe it. So we're going to use some, keep some white for the clouds, and we're going to make some blue for the sky. So I'm going to pipe some of mine in white. So I'm going to show you what I would do. Um, and if you don't have this, we're just going to do it in the bag. So this is a big piping bag, and you might have a different one. This one's silicon, and they've always got a hole in the top. I'll show you like that. And then what I do is I just tip the little nozzle, you can put it on the end of your finger, push your finger right into the hole, push, 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 like that. You've got butter, vanilla and icing sugar, how much water? 25 millilitres, and it will just come together. So I've got it like that, and then I just fold it down, it's a big one, put it over my hand a bit like that, and I'm just going to take a little bit of white. I don't need very much because this is only going to be for the clouds, okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit like that in there. And then this is actually way too big a bag. I'm going to squish it all the way down like that so that I can pipe it out in a minute. Pop a bit more in there. And if you haven't got a piping bag, and I know most of you haven't, you can do exactly the same as me in a little plastic bag. So if I show you in a little food bag, I'll show you what I mean. So I have only got a tiny, tiny bit, okay? So, right. So if you've got like a food bag like this, what you can do is just do exactly what I did, take a little bit, shove it in, in here, push it right down into the corner, so you'll do what I did, shove it all the way down there, and then you'll pull out one of those little pointed corners, and then you'll just be able to snip a little bit and use it like a piping bag, tie a knot, tie a knot on the top, okay? So all of that works. Good. Now with the rest of this, because most of it I want to be blue, so I'm going to spread the top of my cakes blue, so that it's blue like the sky, then with a little bit of cloud, okay? So I'm going to take back my um, blue food dye, I'm going to use my skewer this time, so you can see you can use the skewer as well. And I'm going to take a little bit of this, wipe it on the edge of my spatula again, and then I'm going to try and mix it. I might actually put it in a bowl, I think that's going to be easier. So you could do this again in the food processor, but I'm going to show you, those of you that don't have a food processor, it's super easy to do this way too. There's my icing. You can see it's starting to go a bit blue there. Um, yours look like mini mountains. Yeah, they do look a bit peaky. I like them like that. If you don't like them so much, then you don't need to add as much baking powder, or maybe you added a bit too much. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just mixing my blue in. So you can see this is why these um, food dyes are great, because they don't change the texture of your icing or your cake mix. They just add amazing colour, can you see? And you might want to leave it a bit swirly, because, you know, the sky isn't solid blue colour is it always so it's up to you you could leave it like a marble swirl so there's my blue so I've left it a nice kind of baby blue really 
So that also shows you, you know, last time we made it darker. So if I wanted darker, I just added more food coloring here. Could use the last bit of that on my spatula. Make it, let's see if we get a bit darker. You're gonna watch on replay, that's okay. So you can just, sort of, I know I'm doing a lot today, but you're gonna need your cakes to cool. So I wanted just to go through it so then I can come back and answer your questions. So literally all that is, is just icing sugar, bit of water, butter, and some vanilla. You're hungry, I know. It is making everybody hungry, it smells so good. So there's my icing. Right, now, put all of this out of the way. Oh, I've got a bit more icing in here, so let's keep that. Never wanna waste any. Hmm? Okay, mine are super peaky as well. Maybe I should have made a bit more. Today. Right, let's pop that there. So I'm just going to get you these cakes. Oopsie. Right. So here are my cakes. So you can see they have gone a bit peaky. And you can see what I mean, that the top looks a bit brown, looks a bit dull, but promise the inside is going to be super, super amazing, okay? So um, I'm going to show you this. Shall you swirl the cake mix? You can do, you don't need to. I did in one, I didn't in the other. They do look yummy, don't they? Um, so this one I can see has, if you remember, I did a little bit extra. I put a bit of extra on the top, so I didn't bang that down. So you can see they've gone a bit higher in one than the other, but it doesn't matter. Whatever it looks like, it still tastes just as delicious. So I'm going to leave these to cool, okay? And then I'm going to show you how to ice the top. Now, don't worry, because I know that you're not all there yet and your cakes are in the oven. So that's why I thought it's a good thing to do. So I'm going to show you the finished ones, but you are going to be able to um, do your washing up while you're waiting for your cakes to cool, and then you're gonna be able to ice them. So you'll have all of your icing done. So basically we just need, like I said, we're gonna dye a little bit blue, that we're gonna use, we're gonna have a little bit of white that we're ready to pipe. And then I've also got my laces, okay? Cool. Now, now, here are my cool cakes. Here's some we made earlier. So you can see these. So this was the first lot that I put in. So you can see, look how amazing. So can you remember I did different colors? So you can see this sort of blue on the bottom. Is the water, I normally use boiling hot water just to help dissolve the butter if the butter's a bit thick. But actually today I'm just using um, tap water, just regular, you know, room temperature. So can you see all the different colors there? So it doesn't look still quite brown on the top and on the bottom, but when you cut into them, they're gonna look awesome, okay? So these are my first six and they are a bit peaky, don't worry. If you'd spread yours out a bit, they would be fine. They do look wow, good, I'm pleased you like them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, and don't, don't worry if you're not here yet, it really, really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take a knife, or I can actually do it often with a spoon, is easier. And you have to make sure that they're cool enough, because otherwise you'll butter. It is like rainbow, that's the whole rainbow theme this week. So I'm gonna take a nice spoon, and I'm gonna spread it out on my cake, and I basically wanna cover the top of the cake. Now if yours is flatter, it's gonna be easier, okay? So sometimes I find a spoon really easy. It doesn't need to be super neat, okay? It just needs to cover it. Remember, we're playing hide and seek, so we don't want anybody to know about the amazing surprise inside. So like that is good, okay? Now you might find a knife easier, but when it's peaky, I actually think that a spoon's a bit easier, okay? They are pretty, aren't they? Good. So just watch for a bit, it's okay. If you're still finishing up your cake mix or you're making your icing, it's fine. Yours are probably, unless they come out of the oven, unless whoever it was did plain cakes is out of the oven completely, Yours will probably be too hot, okay? I just popped these actually in the fridge, had a little sneaky chill for a bit. So you can watch and then do your washing up and come back to it a bit later. So you can see I've left a bit of streaky blue in my icing, which I think looks quite pretty. Can you see? So there's two. So I'm just gonna spread these out. And if you've got plain icing, if you didn't have any blue, just spread it just with the white icing, it will still look really nice. And you can put a rainbow lace on the top or maybe Smarties. You can do lots of different things for rainbows. If you've got any of those little um, sweeties or cake decorating bits that are rainbow colors, like the little dragy ones with the sprinkles, there are lots of things you could do to make a rainbow theme if you don't have these. But the, these are actually not too difficult to get hold of because they're in the sweet bit of the supermarket and not in the baking aisle. So can you see, I've just, not super neat, but there you go. So there's my three. Oh, I'm getting lots of woes and ahs and oohs. That's good. So I'll show you how you do it with a knife. So I would just take a table knife and I would just spread it around. So you can see you get a nicer finish, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to spread over the top. So you just find what you like. And you just basically want to hide all those colors so nobody knows what that amazing surprise is underneath. It's a bit like that. 
two more. I'm going to do all six here for you and then I've got more icing to do the rest. And if you don't like icing and you want to leave the cakes plain, that's also fine. They don't really need icing, but they do look very pretty. And this icing you could use to pipe as well. So normally I wouldn't spread it. Normally we put it in a piping bag like I'm going to show you with the white and I'd pipe a nice swirl. You know when you go out to those cupcake shops and you get really nice piped ones, that's what we do. Okay. So you guys are doing really well because we got a lot of stuff to do this morning and it wasn't easy, but so worth it, huh? It's going to be so worth it. Right, so here's my last one before I'm going to show you what we're going to do. There we go. So I've got six blue cupcakes, okay? Can you see that? And now what I'm going to do with my little icing bag, or you could do it in a little plastic bag, is I'm just going to pipe two little clouds and they're going to be the glue that my rainbows are going to sit in. So I'm just going to go, oh, squeeze one. Press down, pull up, and two, and one, and two. Can you see? They don't need to be very big. One, two, and just either side of the moundy bit that we made. And it doesn't really matter what nozzle, and if you're using a piping ba uh, plastic bag, you won't have any nozzle. So it doesn't matter, just a little mound. So can you see those? So there are my little bits. And then I'm going to take my fizzy belts or my laces, whatever it is. And I reckon they should usually be about the same size in half. So you can just fold them in half, give them a little snip like that, just with a pair of scissors. Do not eat them yet, okay? Make sure you've got enough for your cakes. Although once they're open, they are very, very yummy, these. They're fizzy as well. Aren't they pretty? And then what you want to do is you want to take one, if I bring these closer, and we're going to just hold them like this, bend them, and you're going to put one end into one cloud, and one end into the other. So one end into one cloud, one end into the other, okay? So that's why you don't want to make them to the clouds too far apart and that's why it helps also to have that little peaky bit because then they can rest on the peaky bit if they need to. So just push them in gently. That little white icing is like glue. It's gonna hold my rainbows together. Yummy. There you go, what do you think? The cakes have risen, Belle, but now sunk. Okay, it might be possibly a bit too much baking powder. Sometimes it can make it sink, but it really doesn't matter because you're gonna cover it with icing, okay? So unless you've got a complete crater in the middle, they will always slightly flatten down as they come out. They look beautiful, thank you, but yours are gonna look this amazing. So you can see now, you can't see anything inside, and I wanna cut one, so I wanna show you what they look like, okay? So obviously when you cut one, you take the little rainbow bit off, or you eat it, but I just want to show you the inside. So if I cut that, can you see? Look how amazing. Doesn't that look amazing? Can you see? Hi, Elsie and Megan. You're saying hello to Hayden. That's so nice. So you can see all of my different colours because I gave them a bang. You can see all of those rainbows. Look how bright those are, but look how dull the outside and the edges look. Yeah? They look. Oh, hi, Bondon Poncon. So when you do yours, obviously yours are going to be stuff together like that. I'm not going to put that one back together, am I? The other ones look, look prettier. So they're really lovely. And especially if you did them in cases, no one will know because you, all of the sides will be covered. And it's only when people bite into them, they're going to see the rainbow surprise. So I really hope you like that. I know it's a little bit fiddly. So what I would suggest is if your cakes are in the oven now, make your icing, leave all your stuff out and you can cut your laces. Hide the laces from mommy and daddy. Um, so you've got a secret stash of them later. And then do the washing up. It's a rainbow volcano, you're right, it is. But can you see now, when you put the, the peak on it, when I've decorated them, it looks really nice and it does kind of help. So if you're really struggling or you don't have the colours, what you could do, I'll show you with my broken one, is you could just lay that rainbow over the top and it would still be kind of rainbow shaped because you've got a, a dome. And also what you can do with these rainbow laces, I'm going to show you, is... Sometimes people, you could lay them around the sides of the edge of the cake. And actually, if you take them and really cleverly with your fingers, they split into all kinds of colors. Can you see? So you can actually divide each color and then you could use them to go around the outside or to make little rainbow rolls, you know, whatever you want. Have a, you can make a little knot or a little bow, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you can make lots of different things. So those of you that didn't have any food colours, you could still use these and just put little individual colours on the top, whatever you want. You can't wait to ice them. They do look. You're surprising daddy. That is so nice. So I absolutely want to see yours. And when you send me pictures today, I want to see a whole one. 
I want to see what one of these looks like and I want to see the inside so I can see your colours, okay? Because they don't look so nice on the outside. So I know that you're going to love those. Um, if anybody's got any questions about the colours, if you didn't have colours or anything else, feel free, pop it in the comments or um, I think the link to the colours on. Oh, you are very welcome. Thank you. No, th you've all been super patient today because I know it's a tricky one, but you've learned so much today. You've learned how to make cakes, which are amazing. Um, they are fab, aren't they? And I know those of you that made plain ones, they're just as delicious. Remember, this colour doesn't change any of the taste at all. You've learned how to make buttercream. You've learned how to use food colouring. And you've learned how to do a bit of cake decorating. So you have done a lot today. I know we've had a bit of a longer class. So I hope you've enjoyed. If you've enjoyed and you want to chip into Fair Share, I would love that. The link's in the pinned post at the top. Um, you do that all the time. Good. Um, you are very welcome. So share the photos. Let me know how you get on. I would love to see those later. But do make sure that your cakes are cool before you put the buttercream on because otherwise it's just going to slide off. So if it starts to melt, stop, come back later or put your cakes in the fridge and chill them down for a bit. Yours kind of failed, but you managed to make three. Which bit failed? The cake. Some of your photos, Bunny, and I'll have a look. Don't worry. If, if, if the food colouring doesn't look so yummy, it just means you just need to practice with the... Um, with a bit more of the colours. But honestly, they can't really fail, even if they've sunk a bit. Each oven is different. So remember, put them in the middle of the oven. Um, we put ours on the top. I did actually bake mine a bit of a hotter oven than yours because I wanted them to come out quicker. You are very welcome, Luz. Um, but if your cakes veer more to one side than the other, then usually it means your oven is not quite even and you might find the temperature of your oven is a little bit different as well. So don't worry, it's just, it's just practice. And honestly, the most important thing is how they taste. And what's great about decorating is you can hide a lot of what they look like. You'll be able to, you know, put some buttercream around it and things like that. And you would never know. You are very welcome, Edward. And Lizette, you don't have a food processor. What can you use for the icing? So you could, you could do it by hand. You can absolutely do it by hand. Um, but otherwise, if you've got anything like a little blender or a smoothie maker or a Nutribullet or something like that, do it in there. Basically, uh, anything with a blade. You know, or a, or a stick blender you could use. But if you're doing it by hand, what I would do is cream the butter first, soften it up with your spatula, and then slowly add in the icing sugar and mix it to a paste with a bit of water um, to make it a bit softer and a bit easier. But do expect it might get a bit dusty as you're doing it. But you're fine. You learned so much. Well, that's what I need to hear, Tahera. Thank you. Loving all the unicorns and all these rainbows. You are very welcome, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you, Neve. Thank you all for joining me. That's fantastic. Oh, you are very welcome, Eliza. Everybody that's joined in today, I can't wait to see what you do. So have a lovely time in the sunshine. Enjoy sharing your special rainbow cakes with everybody. They would make fantastic gifts for anybody that you're looking after and dropping food parcels in or any NHS workers because we love that rainbow theme, don't we? You are very welcome. It's been a lovely morning, I agree. Oh, we've got lots of daddies getting surprised. You could surprise them with the washing up, Sophie. So what do you think? I will see you on Monday. Yes, those of you that are joining me for the half-term classes, I will see you next week and I will send out recipes later for next week. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy eating your cakes. Take care, guys. Bye.